Hey, well, you know, in the, in the beginning, when you first come to know the Lord, there's several things that I think are really helpful. Uh, my pastor told me that, you know, the foundation stones are, you got to pray, you need fellowship, you need witness. But he said, number one is you need to study the Word of God. Now, you know, like most people, I think when I first heard that, I thought, well, great. The Bible is probably like any other book. I'll start in the beginning which was really exciting for about the first six, seven, even all the way up to the 11th chapter. But, you know, when you got into the begats, it was just not really very exciting. And it became actually somewhat discouraging. So, you know, when you're studying the Bible, it starts by being able to read and read the Bible. And my assumption, of course, is that you're able to read or you wouldn't be taking this course. But the Word of God is, is primary. It's so important for us to be able to study. Now, we have a separate course called Fresh Manna on how to study the Word. If you're really interested in going much deeper, and even deeper than that, Dr. Ken Chance developed a course around understanding the Bible, which is even more about you know, preparing yourself to study it you know, at a much higher level. But hey, to begin with, you just need to know something about the book. So, you know, I really encourage new converts to read the Bible, of course, but start probably in the book of John. And in fact, I, I normally ask them, start in John chapter 3, because essentially that's just what's happened to you. You've just become born again or born from above. Then I encourage, read the rest of John's, read some maybe from the Psalms, read Mark, that's a short gospel, and then kind of launch from there and maybe you know, eventually develop the habit of reading some Old Testament, New Testament every day. That's really a great way to go in terms of really starting to know and understand the Bible. You know, one of the things we know for sure is the Bible is understandable. I mean, it's in your language. Of course, it didn't start in your language. It's one of the difficulties in studying the Bible is that it wasn't written in English and it wasn't written for our day and for our time. It was written in that day and that time, but it's applicable to our day and our time. So when you read and study the Word, of course, it starts with reading and then asking questions about what does it mean. And the first question should lead you to, I wonder what it meant to the folks that were reading it in that day and that time. And then you can make an application to our day and our time. And there's lots of tools that are readily available to you to help you to read and study the Word. You know, one of the importance of the Word, and I talk about this in this chapter in New Beginnings, is, I mean, the Word endures, it nourishes us, us it's been written on our heart, uh, it furnishes light or guidance and wisdom for us, it purifies our life, etc. And so, uh, you know, reading and studying the Word is just really, really important. So one of the things that I, I emphasize in the book is if you're going to study, you want to have an, an attitude of reverence. Uh, this is not just words on a page. These are the words of God. It's the living Word. You know, there's different words for Word. You know, there's the rhema, which is an individual word in time and season. There's the, the Logos, that's the living word. Jesus is the Logos, the very living word of God. There's the Graphe, that's the written word. Anyway, we have the word, it's for us, but it's, it, you know, I kind of like the way, you know, when you, when you read 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse, verses 1 through 4, it talks about, you know, Paul's writing this letter. And of course, it's inspired by Holy Spirit, as all scripture is. And he's, he's writing this to his son in the Lord, Timothy. And I can only um, kind of assume that when Paul sat down to write this, first of all, he would have been in prayer and the presence of God, I'm sure, and, and being inspired by Holy Spirit. As he began to write, he, he talks about Timothy, his true son in the Lord. And he wants him to be successful. And he, he wants him to preach and teach the word and see the word transform people. But I imagine also when Timothy received the letter, when he saw the seal of his father in the Lord Paul, he probably stopped and said, man, I don't care. I mean, he was the bishop of the church there in Ephesus, but he didn't care what was going on. His schedule was canceled because the most important thing that happened that day was receiving the letter from his spiritual father, Paul. You know, we need to have that kind of reverence. God is speaking to us and does speak to us through His Word. 
And so as you read it, reverence it. You know, desire to really grow and gain wisdom and discernment and understanding. I mean, you know, the fear of the Lord, the, 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 the knowledge of the Holy One, knowing God, fearing God, it's the beginning of wisdom, but we need wisdom to be able to live in this life. And the Word of God is filled with wisdom for us. And, you know, when you read it, it's helpful to, you know, spend some time on it. So when I was a kid, uh, 12 years old, was born again, I began to read the Bible. Now, I had heard that, you know, Daniel prayed three times a day, so I figured, yeah, maybe I'll read three times a day. And, you know, I would actually carry around with me a little pocket New Testament. I was quite a Christian nerd, really. But, you know, I, it, it, in, at breakfast time, I would read some from the Scripture. At lunch time, I would read some Scripture. And dinner time, I would read some Scripture. I figure you're eating three times a day. Maybe you should read the Bible three times a day. Now, again, you do it however you feel like God's leading you to do it. But somehow, daily at least, spending time in the Word, a little of the Old Testament, a little from the New Testament, some Psalms and Proverbs, however you do it, it re- will enrich your life, it will strengthen you in your walk. And it really is a foundational stone of a healthy new beginning in Christ. Well, we want to continue on then in looking at not just how to study the Word, but the importance of the Word and doing the Word and living the Word. Anyway, I think you've got it. You know, the Word of God is primary to your life. You know, another doctrine that's talked about in Hebrews is that of laying on of hands. Now, I mean, you know, many of us maybe have not really heard of that concept. Or maybe you've seen some YouTube videos of, you know, preachers putting their hands on people and people quaking and shaking and falling down and all that stuff. Well, you know, it's not a mystical thing. It's not a magical thing, but it is a thing in the Bible that we are to lay hands on people for certain reasons. Now, we're not to do it quickly. We're not to do it suddenly, as the Bible says, or for no good reason. No, there's always a good reason. And the good reason really is, first and foremost, to bless people. I mean, that's one of the ways that we see the right hand of power in the Old Testament, as it's talked about, was used to pass on a, a blessing. Uh, it was often done with a prophetic word, and it was usually with the right hand because, again, that was the, considered the hand of power. So, laying on of hands is really nothing more than literally putting hands on people, usually to pass on a blessing, perhaps to impart a spiritual gifting. If you're five-fold ministry leader, uh, you know the laying on of hands can pass on blessing as well as pass on giftings from the Holy Spirit, but also it's uh, for, for healing, to release healing. There's a, something about that kind of point of contact where you, where you touch someone. And, I, you know, I, I still remember the, the first time I, I laid hands on someone for healing. I mean, uh, I mean, the first one actually was my family dog. But later on, as I realized that it's not just for dogs, although God healed, healed my dog, but that laying on of hands is something that anyone can do including, I mean, really, anyone with faith can lay hands on a person and impart or release God's healing virtue from themselves into them. Now, I don't know how it works. Nobody really knows how it works. It just works by faith. But the the act of faith is the actual laying on of hands. The act of faith is the actual prayer. When I lay hands and I pray, that is the act of faith, and it's faith that's necessary to see God bring about healing and blessing in people's lives. And so one of the key doctrines is that of laying on of hands for blessing, uh, impartation of gifts, especially spiritual gifts, for healing, etc. And so, hey, you know, one of the great joys that we have as believers is we can bless each other. Now, again, you you don't have to lay hands on everybody. I think it's good to be led by the Holy Spirit. But you know, if the Lord prompts you to pray for someone, why not maybe come up to them and say, you know, I really believe that God wants me to pray for you. Do you mind if I lay hands on you? You know, be appropriate, of course. It's either on their head. Be careful of messing up women's hair, you know, or on their shoulder, you know, or, or if they've got an area of illness or pain or whatever, 
and they, they give you permission. You can lay hands on that specific area and pray and believe God to impart his blessing, his love, his grace, his healing into them. So look, these are all just basic things that every believer needs to understand because he wants us to fully function as his children and eventually growing into the maturity of being the adopted sons and daughters of God.